This is where drama flashes by at 293 feet per second. Danger lurking around every corner. Racers fueled by bravery and adrenaline. Everyone aiming for victory lane. For the fifth straight year, WENY TV is proud to present the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Brought to you in part by Lake Country Motorsports and Horseheads Pick Apart. From the home of the I Love New York 355 at the Glen, let's go live to Watkins Glen International with Jenna Harner and Kevin Case. Hello and welcome into William Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen on this beautiful evening here at Watkins Glen International. I'm Jenna Harner alongside Kevin Case and for the next hour we are going to catch you up to speed on all you need to know NASCAR leading up to this weekend's I Love New York 355 at the Glen. Yeah that's right Jenna we're going to hit the big storylines leading up to tomorrow's race and hear from fans young and old and we're definitely going to talk Dale Earnhardt Jr. as he gets ready to race for the final time final at Watkins Glen. Should be fantastic. Yep. We're also going to take a look at everything behind the scenes from the food to what it's like inside a hauler. Yeah, that's right, Jenna. But first, let's get right to it. The Zippo 200 wrapped up a little while ago behind us, a couple hours ago, and you got to talk to the winner, Kyle Busch. Well, I'm now joined by the Zippo 200 winner, Kyle Busch. Thank you yep. so much. We appreciate you taking the time. First off, What's it like? You've won here before, but never in the Xfinity Series. What's a win mean to you today? Uh, it means a lot. You know, obviously, just being able to score the victory anytime in any series, but uh, especially here at Watkins Glen in the Xfinity Series, for me, it's just kind of been one of those boxes that I've not been able to check for a long, long time. But finally feels good to get that done here today. And, um, you know, looking forward to the weekend. We've obviously had a really fast Xfinity Series car, and we've got a really fast Cup car as well, too. So um, hopefully that bodes well for us tomorrow. You talk about having a fast cup car, wanting it to go well tomorrow. You got a lot of momentum coming in. You win at Pocono last week. You come in, you win today. How much does that really play a role, you know, carrying that momentum forward to tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, we've had uh, a lot of good runs all year long. We've been up front. We've led a lot of laps. We've been one of the cars to beat, you know, almost weekly. Uh, it just kind of hadn't quite worked out our way until last week at Pocono. We were finally able to break through and get that win on the cup side. So, um, you know, I think that the momentum when you're able to score that win, obviously it propels you. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you can do it. Uh, we knew it could. The whole team's been doing everything possible. But uh, to finally get a win and, and break through on the cup side after a year drought, I mean, that feels like forever in, uh, in my world. So um, just able to, to score the win last week, the win here today, and hopefully we can sweep the weekend. Well, you get the win. Looking for a weekend sweep. We thank you so much, and thanks so much. Of Good course. luck tomorrow. No problem. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Big thanks to Kyle for talking with us after yeah. his win. Congrats to him. And now we're going to go over to the Cup Series, where, like we said earlier, Jenna, the format's kind of changed a little bit. We've got qualifying and the race on the same exact day. <laughs> That's tomorrow. But drivers took to the track for the first rounds of practice today. And Kind of like when we were here for the IMSA series, things got fast early and they stayed fast. And they stayed fast all day. Brad Keselowski had the fastest lap time, finishing just one time around the track in over 70 seconds. Kurt Busch followed second, just one hundredth of a second behind. And Martin Truex Jr. rounded out the top three. Denny Hamlin was fifth. But interesting to note, he held the best consecutive lap right. average on the afternoon. Yeah, some might say that's actually the most important. Keeping going Absolutely. here, Chase Elliott was eighth, Kyle Busch was 10th, AJ Allmendinger, we'll have an interview with him coming up a little later, he was 18th and Junior was 31st, so not looking too good for Joe Junior just yet. No, not yet, but you know, there's tons of time tomorrow, time can change. That's right, and speaking of tomorrow, let's take a look ahead to tomorrow's schedule. It's packed pretty tightly, qualifying for this year's race begins at 12.05 with two rounds, and. Just under three hours later, of course, will be the green flag wave. Drivers take to the track for introductions at 2.20 before hopping into their cars and starting their engines for the 2017 I Love New York 355 at the Glen. So exciting stuff. Exciting stuff. Well, since it's such a beautiful evening tonight at the Glen, we want to know whether this weather will stay overnight and how conditions are looking come tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right, well, Chief Meteorologist Joe Varis joins us live from the track. Let's find out where he is. Joe, where are you out there? Hey guys, of all places, I'm up here on the crow's nest. The only thing I'm uh, missing out on is waving the checkered flag. We'll have to see who that's way for tomorrow. Uh, but for the time being, yeah, weather-wise, it really turned out to be a decent day across Twin Tiers. Uh, definitely losing all that humidity we've had over the last several days. And uh, you know what? It's going to stay quite comfortable. 
through the next 24 hours or so. Perfect for racing for tomorrow. So let's check out what we're dealing with right now up here at the Glen. We're looking at a mix of sun and clouds. And again, the humidity has come way down. We're looking at a temperature actually in the upper 60s right now. So almost feeling fall like across the region. And we have a westerly breeze at 15 miles an hour, making it feel even a little bit cooler. Uh, here's what we're expecting for tonight's weather. It'll remain dry. Uh, some patchy fog will be possible, especially in the valley locations, but up here at the track uh, should be good to go as far as visibility is concerned. And uh, temperatures will bottom out the upper 40s to around 50, so a light jacket early tomorrow morning. But for the big race tomorrow, looking great weather-wise. Uh, we'll have a mix of sun and clouds and again, low humidity, uh, maybe a sprinkle during the afternoon, but most locations should stay dry. Uh, temperatures topping out at 76. That's our five degree guarantee. So again, a big improvement in the weather department compared to where we've been. Does look like some rain moving back in early next week, but what we're most concerned about is tomorrow's weather and we should be good to go for racing. We'll have more weather information coming up for you guys in just a bit. Jenna, Kevin. Now there's been a bit of a youth movement in NASCAR yeah. as of recently and for good reason. There's a lot of young drivers hitting the scene, making an impact on the 2017 season. Kev, let's take a look at some of those. One of those in the under 25 club, Kyle Larson. He sits second on the season. The 24 year old has two wins on the year. The Auto Club 400 and the Firekeepers Casino 400 down in Michigan. He's also second in the standings with top five finishes with nine. Not too shabby for him. Another up and coming driver, Jenna, to keep an eye on. Chase Elliott is 21 years old, two years younger than <laughs> younger us. Than we are. Oh, yeah, what are we doing <laughs> up here? Anyway, he's proved himself among some of NASCAR's best. He's holding a strong seventh in the standings overall right now. He's winless on the season, but his overall point totals kind of speak for themselves. And so do his top 10 finishes. He's tied for fourth in that stat category with 12 top 10 finishes. Well, it should be interesting to see how they do tomorrow. We're going to take a quick break, but coming up after, it's the end of the road for number 88 at Watkins Glen International. We caught up with fans just to see their reaction yeah. on the Legends retirement. We'll be right back. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. Brought to you in part by Lake Country Motorsports and Horse Ed's Pick Apart. And welcome back to Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. I'm Jenna Harner. He's Kevin Case. Yep. And Kev, earlier this year, to the shock of pretty much the world, NASCAR legend Dale Earnhardt Jr. announced at 2017 would be his last season. He would be retiring. So we thought we would take a look back at how Dale has fared here at Watkins Glen International. Seemed like a good idea. <laughs> Seemed like a good fitting. idea. Junior's raced at WGI Jenna 20 times, only coming away with one victory. That was way back in 1999 in the Xfinity Series race. Up in the big leagues, he hasn't recorded a W yet. Yet. In fact, Junior actually has never won on a road course, though, so maybe odds stacked him against him a little bit there. A little bit. Specifically at Watkins Glen, he does have two top five finishes. So some good finishes. And three top tens. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do this weekend and see if he can finish off a, his victory here with a career win at Watkins Glen. All right, and as we've said, you know, NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Hernandez Jr., He's retired at the end of the season, so we figured we'd send WMY's Brandon Marr to talk to some of Junior Nation today to get the reaction about the driver leaving the sport. In late April, Dale Earnhardt Jr. announced he would retire from NASCAR at the end of the 2017 season, sending shockwaves through the sport and his fans. I was a mess. I actually left the office. Uh, and I, and I drove to the, uh, the local beer store and I sat in there in the parking lot and listened to it on Sirius XM radio, his press conference. And I was, I was in tears. I was just heartbroken. So yeah, it's going to be hard. It'll be really hard to watch the race next year and not see that 88 car on the track. It's, uh, it's going to be different and we're going to miss him for sure. Since the announcement, fans have been doing what they can to see him race one last time. I've been to the track quite a few years and uh, so definitely wasn't going to miss this one. I was able to get the time off to come up and go to the race to watch him race one more time. To some members of Earnhardt's Legion of Fans, known as Junior Nation, their support for the driver runs deep. The tattoo guy said, bring some pictures in, we'll do his face on your back. So it went from there. It was 19 hours for senior, 16 hours for junior. It took about three years, about five grand worth of tattoos now. But no matter how big of a junior fan you are, it's still tough to think about him leaving. It was hard to come back after his dad, but uh, 
It's kind of hard to see him go, too. While all of Junior Nation is upset about the driver retiring, they thank him for all the memories and wish Dale nothing but happiness in the future. Reporting in Watkins Glen, Brandon Menard, WENY News. Now joined by WENY's Brandon Menard. Brandon, it's fair to say fans are very upset about Dale with his news. Of course. I mean, it's the first time in 43 years, with the exception of Jeffrey Earnhardt, first time in 43 years that NASCAR will not have an Earnhardt in the field. So it's going to be a big change for everyone. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Thank you very much, Brandon. No problem. It. We know you're a friend of Dale we Earnhardt, too. So. It was a pleasure covering it. Also, happy birthday. Thank you very much. I really <laughs> happy birthday it. to Brandon Menard as well. What better way to spend my birthday than at WGI? <laughs> All right, well, moving on here, we're talking about Junior here. Let's talk about some of him and his fellow drivers. He was one of the few guys that we got to hear from today on why they love coming back to the Glen each and every year. Uh, the crowds and, and the scenery, just the, the racetrack's got so much prestige, so much history behind it. So to be able to, to win this race and be a part of that was, uh, was something special and will always be special. I like coming here and I like the series coming here. The weather's always really pretty good, and, and the fans support this place um, consistently. You know, the crowds up here, the fans up here, I, it's the most underrated crowd of the year, I think, because it's the biggest, wildest, craziest crowd. So anytime you have a chance to come to this racetrack, even just to hang out, I mean, at some point this weekend, I'll go through the infield and, and just take in all the sights and all the sounds and all the craziness that happens. It's 48 hours of almost nonstop racing action at, at a racetrack, which is which is very good. Um, something on the track nearly uh, at all hours of the day. So it gives fans something to watch. So I definitely enjoy it. And coming up after this break, a very special guest is going to join us here at Watkins Glen. And I think it's safe to say, Janet, people aren't going to want to miss this. Yeah, you don't want to miss <laughs> this. Be sure to stick with us. We'll be right back. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen, brought to you in part by Lake Country Motorsports and Horse Ed's Pick Apart. And welcome back to Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. Kevin and I are joined by a very special guest right now, <laughs> the president of Watkins Glen International. Craig Flint says to call you MP. We will go with Michael Printup, if that's all right with you. That's okay. You can do MPP. That's what the whole staff does. <laughs> MVP. Well, thank you so much for taking some time out of probably the busiest week of the year. Busy thank this you. weekend. No, <laughs> it's not busy. <laughs> not busy at all. No, There's nothing going on, right? Yeah, no Look, did, who ordered the sun? That's <laughs> it awesome. It came out at the perfect time. Awesome. Well, you kind of led into my first question a little bit. What goes into a planning a weekend as big, as intense, as busy as this one? Well, first of all, you have the you have to have the best staff in motorsports. So check. I hope and they're that, all watching, right? Yeah, well, yeah, they're all watching, you know. Um, <laughs> no, you know what? It's, um, it's, a, it's a lot of work. We, we literally start um, like the day after vintage in September. So we start the, the middle of next month and start planning on. I mean, it takes that much time to do it. When you go from, you know, 30, 40 full-time people and all of a sudden you go to 3,000, um, it takes a lot of planning. Yeah. And um, we have a lot of fun doing it. And you can tell because the staff... Is, is great at it. Uh, the fans keep coming. Media keeps coming. The race teams talk about it. And, and uh, I think we're, um, we're, we're ready to go for our fourth straight sellout next year. There you go. Well, out of all that time you spend on it, my question is kind of what is sort of the toughest challenge when it comes to planning this weekend, this NASCAR weekend? You know, um, hard answer. Um, it, it, it's, it's staffing. It's, it's really staffing. We, you know, we, we, we don't have... Um, uh, like Detroit with Michigan International Speedway, we don't have, you know, five million people down the street. Right. You know, so recruiting and staffing and trying to pull everything together is probably one of the bigger challenges, to be honest with you. Um, so we reach out pretty hard. The team spends a lot of time doing it. Um, and, and we end up with some great people that always work here. And we have a consistent staffing level that just really just knocks it out of the park. Like a college football coach. You're recruiting people in. Yeah, that's all you have to do, <laughs> right? Sounds easy. But, you know, if you went to every department and started asking them how they do it, it would be, you'd get a different answer. Really? Um, because, you know, the, you, you just, it, it's hard. You know, you, you're going from Waverly to 
to Elmira, obviously the Corning, the Horseheads, to Geneva, to Cortland. You know, it's a that's a pretty big area, yeah, you know, absolutely. but it's our viewing district too. That's the best part. Yeah. So we have a lot of fun and, and I think that's the best part. You bring a lot of local ties here. You know, you mentioned all of that recruiting, getting, does that seem like it happens a lot? There's a lot of local, whether it's people coming to help out, fans, all that type of stuff. Yeah, I mean, our fans come from within 250 miles, the majority of them. Uh, we are represented by 50, 46 states, uh, five countries, because I said five continents the other day. And, <laughs> You know, that wasn't even close. There are, there are but uh, you know, we're not drawn from Antarctica. <laughs> you know, Darn we're it. we're still trying to draw from Hawaii. You know, we, I don't think we have anybody from Hawaii, but uh, you know, the 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 media and uh, PR team and social media team was trying to find out, and then we still are. You know, we're trying to find out who came the furthest to come to the Glen this weekend. It's a, a, a Facebook uh, competition, oh. so we're we're looking forward to see um, looking uh, to see who's going to come from the, fur the furthest destination. But anyways, it, it's hard to pull that all together. But you know, it because there's so many factors here. Yeah. I mean, we make a city for a hundred something thousand people, yeah. and and that's what we're doing. Everything. The only thing we don't do is mail delivery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well. literally. I like that. All right, well, hold on. You got the Zippo 200 hat on right now. Kyle Bush won that. But, you know, you're around here a lot, so we figured we'd ask you who you got in tomorrow's race. Well, you know, it's a real simple answer. I've been picking Danica for a couple years, and, and I really just want to see her win. I think she's so talented. And, and, and she deserves a win from her talent, and she's got a great race team. But the, tomorrow's answer is really easy, Dale Jr. Yeah. Now, he did that press conference today, and he wasn't very encouraging. He wasn't really very positive. Yeah. Kind of broke my heart a little bit, and I'm like, but I, I wanted to sit, and I was sitting on the side, and I'm like, but I picked you. you know? <laughs> and then you and doubled like, down, you just picked him again. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to triple down. <laughs> you know, because you know what? The road course racing can, can do it. And the guy did do a lot of training. You heard it today, yeah. Bondurant, Ron Fellows, who's here. I wanted to scream, Ron Fellows is here. You know, come, come hang out with us. But um, I think that, um, you know, this racetrack is very dynamic. It, it is very technical. I won't agree with him not being it's saying not so technical. Um, it is very technical in, in listening to all the drivers. I'll, I'll say that by consensus. Um, we'll see what happens, but I'm, I'm picking Dale. Picking Dale. Well, a lot of the drivers talk about why this is one of their favorite tracks in the country. It was voted the top track in the country. I mean, fans clearly love this place. What's the best part about it for them? What can they expect tomorrow? Well, you know, I, I, it's a big answer, I but I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll try to shorten it up the best I can. <laughs> you know what we do, and, and I, this is what the team does the best, we offer so many different experiences. It's an experiential facility. You can go over there and camp, you can go over there and camp, you can go over there and camp, and you have so many different experiences that you can kind of hang your hat on. And, and you, we even have a family campground to hang out. And I think uh, the experience, with the experience with music, you know, we have the big band last night, Little Rain got in the way, but we still held the big concert, didn't get the Fan Fest in, but we have a concert tonight out in, uh, right behind the grandstand behind us. We have a big concert over about three quarters of a mile away that way. Um, so, you know, you're experiencing different music, you're having fun, there's trees over there, there's lake views over there, uh, there's racetrack views over there. It's about hanging out with your fans, your friends, and just having fun. Awesome. You get it all when you come to the Glen. Well, I, that, I think that's why the fans voted for us. I mean, that's two times in a row. Yeah. And, and, you know, we do a big social push, you know, and we have the third of social population like Daytona. I mean, Daytona has the most for obvious reasons. They're the biggest racetrack in the world. And we have the third and we beat the pants off. <laughs> I shouldn't say that about my brother, but. <laughs> Oh, well, we have a little bit. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Looking forward to tomorrow. We're going to take a quick check of the weather. Joe, where are you and what's it looking like? All right, guys. Yeah, we've been on the move getting our exercise. Now we're high atop the grandstand, commanding view up here. And again, the sky's clearing nicely. Just a few scattered clouds overhead right now. And uh, we're expecting it to stay dry here as we go through the overnight period. Uh, let's take a look at our satellite radar map across the northeast right now. And there are a couple showers and isolated thunder showers coming off the lake, Lake Erie, uh, off to the west, but we're expecting that activity to weaken as it moves our way overnight tonight. We're just calling for a few passing clouds, and that should be about it. Temperatures uh, on the cool side again, upper 40s to around 50. 
closer inspection of our radar again, not showing much locally at all, just some scattered clouds, and that's about it. Tomorrow's forecast, that's the big question. How will it be here up at the Glen? And uh, right now we're thinking good for the most part. Uh, it will be a cool start to the day again, right around 50 degrees. Through the morning sunshine, that'll start to mix with a few more clouds as we go through the afternoon as temperatures rise. We'll top out in the mid 70s, very comfortable for this time of year. The computer model trying to show maybe a sprinkle or a light passing shower as we go through mid to late afternoon. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that we stay dry. The chances for rain, though, very low, only about a 15 to 20 percent chance. So certainly the odds are in our favor as far as precipitation goes for tomorrow. So shouldn't be any weather worries uh, if you're heading up to the Glen tomorrow and for the race tomorrow afternoon. Looking okay for that. Temperatures late day uh, starting to trail back through the 70s and eventually into the 60s. Looks like a big weather maker heading our way, but not until early next week. So uh, looks good to go weather wise. Again, we'll have another update for you coming up in just a few minutes. For the time being, we'll send it back to you guys. And we need to take a quick break, but when we come back, we take a look at a giant garage on wheels. Yeah, that's right, Jen. And we find out just what they put in these huge haulers they drive around from week to week. These drivers, it's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty fantastic. cool. We'll be right back. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. Brought to you in part by Lake Country Motorsports and Horse Ed's Pick Apart. Well, when it comes to racing and race car drivers, usually all the tension is on the drivers themselves. But what about the person who sets the tone for it all? WNY's Cody Carlson takes a ride with Watkins Glen own pace car driver to look at the track from his point of view. Meet Tony Vicchio. You want to go faster all the time. <laughs> Tony has been a pace car driver at Watkins Glen International for almost 30 years now. Not only has he driven the pace car for races a few times, he's also given countless number of rides around the track. Tony says being a driver can be quite difficult. Like you can't slow down or you can't speed up because the, the whole field will accordion, they'll, they'll get all jammed up, so you have to keep a constant, constant speed. Tony has given rides to many well-known people, including former Buffalo Bills quarterback Jim Kelly and a former Miss America pageant winner. You know, all the people I've met over the years doing VIP rides, it's incredible the amount of people you meet. And if Tony's not riding around the track, he's painting around the track. It's fun. I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't do it. Tony owns Vicio Signs and has been making signage and painting logos for WGI since 1984. He also used to do signs for other major tracks like Talladega, Daytona, and Chicago. A lot of people come to the track, but they never know where the signs came from. They just see them there and, and think they appear. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of hard work to make a, do a sign like that. And when I asked Tony why he keeps coming back to WGI, he gave a simple answer. Well, it's the greatest racetrack in the world. And Cody joins us now. Cody, that sounds fantastic. What was it like going around the track with Tony? I tell you what, Jen and Kevin, Tony Vicchio is such an interesting guy. He's so cool. I tell you, just riding around with him in that track, he knows every single point. He knows exactly what to do. I think it might be safe to say no one knows this track better than Tony. He told me, guys, this summer at some point, unofficially, he'll have been going around the track for 7,000 laps. 7,000 laps. That's some, that's some hard math. And he makes those signs, too, and that's pretty cool as well. You know, all the start-finish signs, all logos for WGI, so that's pretty cool. And I really want to thank Tony for uh, taking the time to sit down with me. Absolutely. And we thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you took a better than Thank you for sitting down with us. For sure. And if you guys haven't had a ride around the track yet, I definitely recommend it. Okay. Sounds good. All right, we're well, moving on here. When they're racing 35 weeks a year, a hauler is kind of key to any driver's success. So, WMY's Kara Demers gives us a look at what's inside these huge vehicles over the, way, over the course rather, of a race weekend. Yeah, so this is our race shop on wheels. And from the moment the haulers pull in, everything is packed onto those 18 wheels. Think of these haulers as living space, garages, and command centers all in one. Anything the drivers and their crew might need while they're here at the Glen is right inside. We got an inside look when driver Michael McDowell took us inside his team's hauler. The team's biggest part is being able to communicate, make changes, do it on the fly. Um, so, 
Everything has to be functioning at a high level. That means having um, everything on parts. hand. So we have, you know, just spare bits and pieces and hoses and transmissions and brakes and, you know, everything is here um, to completely rebuild a car. From nuts and bolts to spare tires to even a spare car. You can see right there, there's oh, wow. another complete race car that's ready to go on the racetrack. Those haulers can be up to 80 feet long and it takes a team to keep them up and running. Everybody has to watch each other's back because there's a lot of pieces coming in and out, you know, throughout the weekend. It's really cool. It's a it's a, an orchestrated circus for sure. You got living space, then kind of the garage. Yeah, so this is all all working area. Um, this is the shock dyno spring shocks and then up front here is we have the lounge. And then we asked the most important question of the day. How does he fuel up for race day. Yeah, my go to I make uh, peanut butter and banana sandwiches. So oh, there's yeah. it. <laughs> um, it's safe. Uh, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, living on the road. Sometimes you got to worry about things uh, expiring and you never know what you're going to get. So I, I stick to the safe bet. Reporting from the garages at WGI, Kara Demers, WENY News. And coming up, it's time to get technical. We take a look behind the scenes to see how drivers get prepared for any weather condition. Any and every weather condition, Jenna. Although this, you don't need to prepare for this. <laughs> no. But we've got that and so much more to come on Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, Jenna, right now and today, the weather at Watkins Glen has been perfect to fit for fans to enjoy, but every once in a while, it can get a little dicey. It can, and they have to have a plan, you know, whether it's rainy, whether there's scattered showers, whether it's going to be sunny. WNY's Allie DeBicke talked with a product manager for Goodyear to see what type of tires they're built for on a rainy day. Take a look at all these tires. Goodyear brings about 2,000 tires to the Glen each year, but these are just for perfect conditions like good sun, good temperatures. But what happens when it's raining outside? Goodyear recommends a slick tread racing tire for when conditions are optimum for racing. But sometimes Mother Nature has the final say. Goodyear has another tire that can help in rainier conditions. Here we have a wet weather program. And we have a second tire that we distribute to teams. This would be our Goodyear Eagle wet weather tire. If the conditions are right uh, during practice or during, uh, during a race, NASCAR may make the decision to put the teams on, uh, on rain tires. And this particular tire right here is designed to work on a wet track. Rain tires are helpful, but they cannot solve all weather problems. This actually has a directional tread, which does a really good job of moving water away from the tread of the tire and keeping contact on the ground, rubber contact with the track. But if you have heavy standing water, at the speed these cars travel, even a directional tread pattern may not be able to pump enough water out from underneath the tread, and you're gonna have hydroplaning just like you would in a street car. Rain or shine, race weekend must go on. That's why Goodyear has race teams prepared no matter what the weather. Reporting at Watkins Glen International, Allie DeBicke, WENY News. Well, in order to keep stock cars running at top notch, Jenna, pit crews are always at the ready. They are, but there's a unique challenge at Watkins Glen. Things are flipped a little bit. WNMI's Isabel Garcia spoke with one of the coaches to talk about those challenges. For 35 weeks of race season, cars enter the pits going clockwise. As one pit crew coach explains, for Watkins Glen International, it's a little bit unique. They have to switch up their game 180 degrees. It's a whole different animal, it's a whole different beast, and it's really evolved from when I started 10 years ago to what we have now. WGI is one of the only racetracks in the circuit where the pits are considered backwards. For the 16 crew, their roles take on a different challenge. Here, everybody's job is the same, but the adjustments are different. We can't do, uh, we can't have the, the free range that we can on every adjustment doing a stop backwards. Some adjustments today are going to take a lot longer to do than a normal pit stop. Another major aspect of the pits, ever-changing technology, equipment, and inventions. The uh, technology that we put in the jacks and the guns have come a long way. They come a long way every year, and it's something that every team has to stay up on. It's a pretty expensive uh, job, but you can't bring a knife to a gunfight. While timing, of course, is one of the most critical aspects of pit lane, there's also major risk involved for all of the crew members. Safety is a huge deal. You know, uh, the guys have to wear a fire suit. They have fireproof underwear that they wear under their fire suits. Obviously, you got to wear helmets, fireproof shoes, 
And uh, NASCAR has done a good job of watching out for the pit crew guys, taking care of what's going on. For this coach, the pit crew activity is a bit of a sport in and of itself. I've always loved the competition of the, of the pit road, the pit stops, and it's great to see these guys excel. It's great to see young guys come in and excel. So there's a lot of good things about uh, what I get to do. That was WNY's Isabel Garcia reporting. Thank you so much, Isabel. Well, coming up, Craig Flint set out earlier this week to find some of NASCAR's most exciting fans. Yeah, that's what we told him to do, but in classic Craig Flint fashion, <laughs> he came back with something completely different and awesome. You're going to see this. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're live here at Watkins Glen. And now, Jenna, we had Craig Flint report a story for us here mm -hmm. this weekend. Yep. And Craig's pretty crazy. He's pretty mm -hmm. goofy. So we thought, you know, we'll send him on a crazy, goofy story. But instead, he came back <laughs> with something that surprised even us yeah. who work with him every single day. Take a look. All right, race weekend is here, and automatically you're thinking of fast cars and fun and barbecues and beer and a bunch of friends. But what about furry friends? Have you ever seen this? Check this out. Meet Nicole Baum. She has been a regular here at Watkins Glen International for the past 13 years. Like so many others, she loves coming here. It's our vacation. It's just home away from home. The, the people, people are yeah. so friendly. We, we love it. It's just, it. It's just like family here. Every year, she adds to that beauty by bringing her collection of stuffed animals. Here's the story of why she does. It's a story about overcoming life's obstacles and giving back started out as I was an abused child and these were my safe haven and they just keep coming to me and being given to me and eventually now I've overflowed and I want to give back and it just started up setting up a few and then it's gotten as you can see to hundreds and now I just like to give back to the kids and anybody that you know that it makes them smile it makes them happy she even lets a big kid like me in on the action personally I like the purple bear what do you guys think? Do you think I should take this one? Yeah. What do you think I should what do you what do you think I should name it? Susan. Susan? <laughs> Susan? Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. All right, cool. So next year, stop over to section G2, say hi to Nicole, and leave with a souvenir. The best part? It's free. And you are certain to walk away with a smile. And it can't get any better than that. Come on by and and you'll never know what you're gonna see. I can tell you that. You'll never know what, what we're going to put up. It'll always be something different. Craig, so you found something truly different and something pretty cool. Yeah, you know me. I don't follow directions. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, awesome lady. Nicole is super, uh, super great to talk to. Great hearing her story. But there's more. Uh, you know, I, I didn't want to leave empty-handed. So, Kevin, I got you a little pink oh, uh, seal. Oh. And then, Jenna, this one's for you. Okay. All right. So and then here, this is mine. This is my guy. You get one too? Yeah. I got a little monkey dude. Or is that a monkey? It looks Something like that. It could be a monkey. I All think right. it could be whatever you want it to be. And she okay. wanted to make sure that you guys were well fed. So oh this my here oh my goodness. is a speedy. Just for you guys. Speedy. Yeah. We get, I don't know if we can see it. Can I see me? Yeah, no. I can. I don't speedy know. and stuffed animals. Yeah, speedy and stuffed <laughs> animals. Wow. There you go. Awesome wow. interview. I had fun doing it. Sometimes these things just fall out of the sky, the clear blue sky, like it is right now. It's great. <laughs> we lucked out for weather and really, really fas fascinating just yeah. to see what Nicole does across the track. Yeah. And it's nice that she's uh, giving back and thinking about the kids. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, these are really fantastic. These are great. They're the really pink cute. one, my God, just for you. I like it. <laughs> just I love it. It's a seal. I love seals. Look at that. Well, coming up after the break, racing isn't the only oh. thing fans... Oh, I can't he fell put in, it. He fell in the food. <laughs> He's hungry. Racing isn't the only thing fans come here for the weekend. They come for some of the eats. We take a look at the best things to get at Watkins Glen. Coming right up, we'll be back. And welcome back. We're live here at Watkins Glen International. And Kev, I don't know about you, but all this racing can make people, including myself, pretty hungry. I know. I wish we had, had time to eat that chicken speedy. But after, <laughs> after the show. After, after the, show. the show. But thankfully, for the rest of you fans out there, WGI cooks up tons of food to keep everyone satisfied all weekend long. We sent our Leander Rosa to scope out the best eats at the Glen. 
right here at Watkins Glen International, there are more than 40 vendors or concession stands that feed any appetite. From the grilled classics to sweet treats, you'll find it all on the Midway. And each year, the Glen's executive chef, Paul Miller, likes to change up the menu and feature something special. This year's theme is Euros at the Glen. You'll find a variety of Greek food, from Spinacopita to Euros, of course. So with all these options, what are the fan favorites? We asked some Glen goers. My favorite food at the Glen is probably the Philly cheesesteaks, fully mm. loaded. Pizza, gotta have pizza, pizza. for sure. Pizza, yeah. pizza. How about you? I'll say wings. Any type of ice cream is always good to me. Steaks on the grill. Beer. Beer, followed beer. by beer. Probably cheese fries. Cheese fries. I like the cheese fries. French fries, yeah. Definitely sausage, onions, and peppers. Probably the hot dogs. I think a Glen Dog and a nice cold Coca-Cola. In the Glen Dog, you can't beat a Glen Dog. What's a Glen Dog, you ask? It's a Watkins Glen International creation that features some of the regional sponsors. A Salem's hot dog in a pretzel bun topped with Yancey's fancy mac and cheese and some crushed goldfish. We need one Glen dog. In one NASCAR weekend at WGI, they sell about 8,000 Glen dogs. That compares to about 4,000 burgers, 4,000 sausages, and 10,000 orders of french fries. Well, all this talk about food has made me pretty hungry, so I'm going to try the oh-so-popular Glen Dog. Don't worry, guys, I'll bring you some. For now, reporting down at the Midway at WGI, Leanne Rosa, WENY News. Leanne, we're still waiting on those Glen Dogs. I'm craving one. Yeah, I am too, but it's time for another check on weather. Let's see, maybe Joe's at the Glen Dog stand, because we never on? know where he is. Take it away, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm getting kind of hungry myself. I think I know where I'm heading after this. Hey, we're making our way around the track. We uh, started in the crow's nest, uh, then on top of the grandstand, and now we're in pit lane right now. And uh, yeah, weather-wise, we're looking pretty good across the area. Let's take a look at what we can expect as we go through uh, the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. Big area of high pressure sliding out of the Ohio Valley. That's great news for our weather conditions for tomorrow. With high pressure nearby, that means uh, dry conditions for the most part. Uh, we'll be looking at sunshine to start, some fair weather clouds during the afternoon. Temperatures very pleasant for this time of year. Looking at highs generally in the mid 70s. And again, there may be a sprinkle under some of the cloud cover developing during the afternoon or evening, but uh, for the most part, will be dry tomorrow. Better chance for that rain arriving uh, later tomorrow night and on Monday. So if you're doing traveling uh, late tomorrow or Monday, be prepared for some rainy conditions once again all across not only the Twin Tiers, but for the Northeast as well. And the planner for the Glen tomorrow, again, we're coming up to experience what's going on up here, looking at a uh, dry day, again, mainly dry, maybe a sprinkle in the afternoon, but look at the temperatures, uh, about 75, 76 is where we'll top out for tomorrow afternoon. So that's the latest weather forecast uh, for the time being. Maybe a light jacket if you're stepping out for tonight as temperatures continue to drop. We'll send it back to you guys. Thanks, Joe. Well, NASCAR visits dozens of cities every year, but yeah. Watkins Glen brings its charm to the races. That's absolutely true, Jenna. After the break, we're going to be looking at NASCAR made by the Glen. We'll see you in a few. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen, brought to you in part by Lake Country Motorsports and Horse Edge Pickup Park. Welcome back. We are live here at Watkins Glen. And guys, right behind us, when someone wins the race in Victory Lane, we get a big celebration, but it wouldn't be the same without, you know, the champagne. It wouldn't. There's a sp sparkling wine that has a special local connection, and WNY's Renata Steele is here to tell us a little bit more about that. That's right. It's a partnership with a track that has gone back for decades now. Pleasant Valley Wine Company, nestled in Hammondsport, New York, has a storied history with a long, a long history of champagne and its relationship with the track and, of course, celebrating. When the winner of the I Love New York 355 at the Glen pulls into Gatorade Victory Lane at WGI on Sunday, they'll be celebrating with a champagne made by the oldest winery in the Finger Lakes. I think a great part of the American tradition, just like you know, the track is for, for racing. So the two brands, the two, you know, the two products go very well together. They're both you know, historic and well-known, and um, 
we think it's a great partnership. A partnership made in Finger Lakes heaven, the world-renowned Watkins Glen International and the historic Pleasant Valley Wine Company owned by the Doyle family. You know, my dad, um, who, you know, who owns the place, Mike Doyle, he talks about, he talked about when he got into this business about making, making something that would be part of celebrations and, you know, making, making something that makes people happy. And, um, Champagne certainly does that. Patrick Doyle says the role of their award-winning Great Western Champagne fits perfectly in the racing world after the checkered flag waves at the finish line at WGI. While the drivers may end up wearing more of the champagne than drinking it, having a place in the world of NASCAR at Watkins Glen is one the winery looks forward to continuing. We are just so, it's a privilege for us to be able to be in the winner's circle and and uh, you know, and celebrate with with all these wonderful um, you know racers and drivers, and to be with them at that great moment in their careers and their lives is really a special thing. And we're, we're very happy about that. It's a um, it's a great great partnership. All right, guys, this is it: the Great Western Champagne made wow. at Pleasant Valley Wine Company. That looks like it's about. 40 pounds. Yeah. It, it's about, yeah. Four, I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> I do know it's uh, it's several liters oh of God. champagne. Uh, this is what we're going to find in Victory Lane tomorrow after the I Love New York 355. Of course, Great Western Champagne. We've got the logo here. The race logo is on the other side of the bottle, so it's commemorative for the actual race. And I want to say thank you to Patrick Doyle and the family at Pleasant Valley Wine Company for allowing me to come visit the winery this week and learn about the history of the champagne itself and their relationship with WGI and their their historic tie to racing in the Finger Lakes. The local tie is really what's fantastic. It seems that a lot of, you know, local businesses, people really coming to the Glen and wanting to mm -hmm. show their support for the Southern Tier. And they absolutely do. Absolutely. And the Finger Lakes, of course. And the Finger Lakes. And everyone in WMY has been working really hard on this show. So I think we should so... use that bottle after the show. <laughs> Everyone's been asking me about that. <laughs> I was going to say, you've been walking around the track and you've said it seems like I've you're I've been popular. very popular walking around with this this afternoon. <laughs> oh, well, we'll be sure to save that one for later. Coming up yeah. after the break, Joe's got one final look at your race day forecast. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are live here at Watkins Glen and Jenna last night. Some crazy weather whipped through here, kind of ruined some of the fan events, unfortunately. It did, but today was beautiful. Today was and beautiful. And things seem like they're sounding pretty good for tomorrow. Let's take one last look at the forecast. Chief, where are you? Hey, well, 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 it's very appropriate, right, to wrap things up at Victory Lane. So uh, <laughs> I wonder who's going to be standing here tomorrow at this time. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, it was wild weather yesterday. Severe thunderstorm warnings across the area, getting reports of damage with trees down and things like that. But that's out of the picture. That was with a cold front that came through last night and since pushed off the East Coast. And we're looking at... Uh, very nice for tomorrow. So race day forecast looking like this. Uh, we're calling for a mix of sun and clouds. And again, temperatures very pleasant. Uh, 76 is our five degree guarantee. Maybe a sprinkle under some of the thicker cloud cover, but we should be good to go. Back to you guys. Awesome. Thanks so much, Joe. We'll be sure to follow us tomorrow on social media. Thanks so much for joining us live here on Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. Have a great night.